Following yesterday's International Humanitarian Pledging a Conference for Sudan in Paris, aid groups say it brought much-needed attention to Sudan's increasingly forgotten crisis, but it does not end there. Mercy Corps Country Director for Sudan, Sibongali Kayola, tells VOA's Carol Van Dam the aid group is still facing a shortfall of about $2 billion to respond to the urgent urgency in Sudan and neighboring countries where Sudanese have fled to escape the fighting. We welcome the announcement uh, of the commitment of 2 billion euros to respond to the urgent needs of people inside Sudan uh, and in neighboring countries as well. Whilst this pledge is quite generous, we also have to be realistic because what has been received represents only 20 cents per day for each person facing urgent needs in Sudan and in neighboring countries as well. Whilst we appreciate these funds, it has to be said that more funds are needed and these funds need to be dispersed immediately to humanitarian responders. There's talk of famine in Sudan right now. Will this amount of money, if it comes through, because I understand these are commitments at this point, will it avert a famine? Unfortunately, it by the time famine is declared, it would be too late. And waiting until we receive a declaration of famine to scale up assistance would lead to hundreds of thousands of unnecessary deaths and have repercussions for many years to come. This amount, whilst it will go a a long way in helping uh, to alleviate the situation, much more is needed. And preventing famine really requires donors to go beyond what has been pledged to ensure that we make the most uh, of where we are today and prevent famine. About how many people are facing severe acute hunger in Sudan right now? 18 million people, uh, which is equivalent to one third of Sudan's population is facing severe food shortages. And the most recent food security analysis indicated that 17.7 million people or nearly 40% of the population have been affected um, or are in dire need of immediate food assistance. So this this pledging conference was held in France and the French have already pledged an amount. What are they offering and what have other countries, what has the United States pledged? Individual donors have uh, pledged different amounts. The United States and France have been have been very generous with the pledges that have come in. Um, but as I said earlier, we really need to see those pledges being backed by concrete actions as soon as possible. That's Mercy Corps Country Director for Sudan, C. Bongani Kayola. And in more from Sudan, the Sudanese American Physician Association and other human rights groups held a rally yesterday in Washington, D.C.'s Freedom Square to demand action as the conflict in Sudan marked its first anniversary. More than 14,000 civilians have been killed in the war, 10 million have been forced to flee their homes, and millions are on the brink of famine. Dr. Huzaifa Sahlim, Assistant Secretary General of the Sudanese American Physicians Association, tells VOA's Carol Van Dam, the Sudanese war is one of the worst humanitarian crises of the past decade, and the world can no longer stand by and watch. The need for a resolution is, cannot be overstated. We have felt that this rally needs to be held due to the lack of attention towards this crisis out of estimated $2.7 billion that needs to be allocated for humanitarian aid to help alleviate some of the burdens of this crisis, only 5% have been delivered. We firmly believe that action needs to be taken and Sudan needs to be talked about. We are talking about complete communities that are collapsing. People are suffering, people are dying uh, every day. We're talking about people who walk up today who do not know what to eat for lunch or for dinner. We're talking about uh, pregnant women who do not know where to go to deliver their babies. We're talking about dialysis patients, one of which was a dear friend of my father who doesn't have a center to go to as 83% of healthcare facilities have completely shut down or partly working. Speaking of the disintegration, basically, of infrastructure in and around the cities like Khartoum, the capital, and other places, what does Khartoum look like these days? Because it's hard to get in there since... I understand it's a war zone, and journalists have fled, too, for their safety. It's, it's, uh, it's completely devastating. Uh, people are uh, helpless. Um, we are a very locally active group, like our, our uh, association. We work uh, very actively on the ground. 
and getting simple supplies like IV solutions or medications to those who need is, is very difficult and very cumbersome, just given the amount of insecurity and lack of safety to mobilize and to move things around. People have been very... Um, Nigeria's Civil Aviation Authority has taken action against private jet operators floating regulations by suspending the permit for non-commercial flights of three operators called conducting commercial flights. This crackdown follows warnings issued in March 2024. Acting Director General Captain Chris Sinajomo stated that increased surveillance at the Nigerian airports led to the grounding of three operators found violating their PNS, PNCF terms. Specifically, they breached annexal provisions and part 9114 of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Regulations 2023. In response, the NCAA announced a thoroughly re-evaluation of all PNCF holders to ensure compliance with regulations to be completed by April 19, 2024. PNCF holders have been instructed to submit necessary documents within 72 hours to expedite the process. Najomo emphasized these actions highlight the NCAA's commitment to enhancing safety in Nigerian airspace. Furthermore, the NCAA warned the public against using charter operators without a valid air operator's certificate and urged legitimate industry players to report any suspicious activities promptly. This crackdown comes after the NCAA's stern warning in March against PNCF holders engaging in commercial operations.